Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Yeah, so uh, as most folks are aware, we had uh, some pretty detrimental flooding this just this last week, and not as uh, awful as last year's flood for a lot of people, but uh, there were a lot of people this time around who were much more affected than uh, last year's flood. So less widespread, but uh, more intense for some uh, individuals. And uh, that's, you know, I think, unfortunately, something that we can expect more of uh, going on into the future with climate change we know we're going to get a lot more uh, extreme weather events including uh, more rain and more intense rain and and uh, just more intense storms uh, so we certainly need to be looking at, uh, ahead as a as uh, you know individual communities as the government um, in in all aspects to see how we can be better preparing for a hotter, wetter climate. And so, um, you know, one of the things that we were able to do this last session uh, was pass multiple bills that addressed uh, the government's response to uh, natural disasters. We had another bill about preventing this, this kind of flooding that we saw uh, last year and again um, last week. Um, and we also passed something called the Climate Superfund uh, Bill, which uh, would hopefully uh, help pay for some of the, uh, the losses that we've experienced and the mitigation um, efforts that we need to undertake in order to um, have, a, have better infrastructure to prepare for, uh, like I said, a hotter, wetter climate. Now, how does this help, uh, help or hinder or you know, deal with people with special needs? If you're a vulnerable population, vulnerable population category, elderly, disabled, yeah. uh, you know, special needs in some way, how does this play into effect? And um, take us back a little bit to 1992, when Montpelier had a really bad ice camp. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so 1992, as you mentioned, Montpelier experienced an ice jam which um, blocked the outflow of the river and so as a result uh, downtown uh, flooded and that was a, a very different event from what we're experiencing now uh, which is um, you know instead of floods from ice jams um, so much we're just experiencing uh, basically overloading our landscape with with water from rain and that you know in super saturated soil uh, you know ends up um, overwhelming our little streams and brooks and uh, that's that is has what um, has caused a lot of damage and it's it's probably worth mentioning that there's two kinds of damage that we talk about with flooding one now, what kind of damage is there 
Well, <laughs> I mean, there's, we could talk about the kinds of damage to infrastructure, you know, like um, culverts being blown out roads. Um, there's a lot of like emotional trauma that happens as well when people lose um, their belongings or their home or, um, or it's just it's very financially stressful as well. Uh, but what I, what I was referring to um, was that um, from flooding, we might talk about uh, inundation, which is just like waters rising. And um, that's the kind of damage or that's, that's the kind of um, hazard we saw in downtown Montpelier, both in 92 and last year, uh, in last year's flood, where, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily fast moving water, but it, but it rose and, and in creeping up was damaging. Well, yeah, but back um, in the people would rafts to get to work and yes. kayaks. And, yeah, and, right. Uh, you know, that kind of um, issue. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. Well, and then the other kind of damage that um, we talk about is, um, is erosional. And so that's where uh, we saw a lot more of that last year and, and actually this last week as well, where it wasn't so much just water coming up, but rather a fast moving, um, water that has the ability to take a lot of mass with it and um, meant by mass? oh riverbank just whatever is in its way um, and, and as a result ends up carving out uh, the banks of the river uh, to make it wider basically and that is uh, can also be just equally as damaging it tends to be a little more isolated uh, but uh, can be absolutely devastating for places where that occurs. So uh, we saw that a lot last year in, in Cabot and this last year in Plainfield. Or this last week, I should say, in Plainfield. Now, um, you're also a teacher with Mapuya High School. Yes. And some people watching this might not understand but yeah, you know, especially those that are in special education might not so understand stuff, this situation. So, can you kind of, as a teacher, um, I mean, I mean, you wear many hats. This is true. Uh, you know, you're a mother, you're a senator, you're a teacher. <laughs> as a teacher, can you kind of explain this in layman's terms so people, so people can understand what's going on? Yeah, well, so um, as a result of climate change, basically more um, exhaust from cars and from burning fossil fuels um, being in the air, we're getting a lot more heat in the uh, world just in general, and that is causing there to be much more um, uh, evaporation and water in the atmosphere. And so as a result, uh, we're seeing a lot more uh, uh, rain events and a lot, it, the rain events that we have carry a lot more water with them and that, um, you know, we're, our landscape is not used to um, quite so much water. So it can be really powerfully destructive when we, ha when we overload our landscape with water. Um, and so uh, that can, that may, might mean that, you know, we need bigger culverts. Um, it, it also means that if and when we rebuild places like downtown Montpelier that um, we need to build them in such a way that we can um, clean them out easily. You know, having carpets on like the first floor, for example, or in a basement uh, may not be uh, a good idea, especially as those things might get destroyed in, in a flood or in a leaky basement, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and and it's also yeah. It can get kind of scary also. Oh, it can absolutely get scary. That um, that's that's terrifying, right? So it's important that um, people have signed up uh, for VT alerts, um, so that you know if there are hazards um, happening in the area and they need to get um, emergency messages, that they are prepared to do that. Um, and so uh, I'd highly recommend that everybody sign up for for VT alerts. Yeah. What is that? BTAlerts.com? Uh, I'd have to look it up. It might be .org, but um, I'm sure if you just Google VT Alerts, it will come up. Now, do you have any advice? Um, I know we're kind of jumping here. Where I go? But, like, if a person's in a real disaster, mm -hmm. such as blood, 
And I know you, I know you can't replace stuff. Yeah. It's hard to, you know, life is more important. Absolutely. What is some advice you give to people who are experiencing this right now? Um, you know, that kind of thing. Oh I know gosh. It's a to a lot of yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, for anybody who is experiencing or has recently um, experienced uh, losses from flooding, I mean, um, my hope certainly is that folks are reaching out. I mean, the. One of the best things about Vermont is our strength in community, and our, so I, I know that there are people who want to help, uh, who uh, are, are absolutely looking for ways to support our fellow Vermonters. And so, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask for the help that you need to seek it out. There's a lot of resources out there. You know, being in touch with your municipality or with um, your local mutual aid group, all of those, um, there's, there's a lot of groups that um, might be uh, useful to you um, in this moment, and including um, counseling. There's, I know that there's some, um, uh, some counseling available uh, to folks who experienced uh, trauma from the flooding. So, uh, yeah, happy to, if anybody wants to reach out to me to um, get connected with those resources, I'm happy to, to connect anybody. Okay. Um, what, now, let's talk about something that is on everybody's minds, or might be on everybody's minds, dredging. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for bringing that up. How, if you don't mind, I'm just bringing it up. How does it help or hinder the situation when it comes to flooding? That's a great question, and I know that's one that has come up in conversation since last year, I'm sorry for to bring sure. It up. No, it's okay. Well, I'm glad that you asked it because it's really. Um, uh, not the kind of solution that um, people might think that it is because on the one hand it might give you some short-term uh, relief in terms of adding capacity to the river like yeah we need more like we're overwhelming the rivers let's just make them deeper right like that seems like that would make sense and it might help in the short term but what that does actually is it um, steepens the cliffs or the banks of, of a river and um, it, there's actually a term for it, which is calling um, incising. And as, as a res actually, a lot of Vermont's rivers are already incised. Or um, is dredging a, a bad thing? Short version, yes. Yeah, it is a bad thing. Basically, what dredging does is it makes a river unstable and makes it prone to more disastrous flooding in the future. Um, so. If we are looking to live uh, in, a, in a way that is sustainable with our rivers, then um, dredging is not the solution that, uh, that we can rely okay, on. Go ahead. Sure. The whole thing? Yeah. Okay. About dredging. About dredging. Yeah, dredging is not the solution that a lot of people think that it is. Uh, it does uh, help in the short term in terms of adding capacity to the volume of a river but it ultimately makes the river unstable because it makes the banks really steep and as a result can make it more prone to uh, catastrophic uh, erosional um, uh, hazards in the future. Uh, so it's, it's, if we are going to look to live together with our rivers in a sustainable way, dredging is not a good solution. Okay. What is erosion? What is the what? What is erosion? Oh, erosion. erosion. What is the definition? Yeah. In your term sure. Erosion? Yeah, erosion is where water um, picks up like the the sand and the silt and the rocks that are on the banks of a river and just carries it carries it away, just takes it downstream, and so. Um, you might notice that there are places in some rivers where the bank seems to be uh, being eaten away, and so that is erosion. Okay. Um, now, knowing that there are more floods that are going to happen, because sometimes you can't prevent a flood, yeah. or can you uh, prevent a flood or make it so 
that you know horrible flooding doesn't happen too much or happen again. Yeah. Um, what are some ways that we can kind of prepare more for flooding? Sure. So at a statewide policy level, one of the things that we can do is have. Um, uh, in increase or better protection for our wetlands. So wetlands are like, you know, they're like swamps um, and they are, act like sponges. So if we have a big rain event, it's really helpful and important that we have our uh, really healthy uh, swamp or, or um, bogs or fens or um, uh, uh, wetland areas to be able to soak up that water and prevent it from um, you know running quickly uh, into places where maybe we would prefer that it not be uh, so that is one of the things that we passed last year in the legislature was better protections for wetlands a second thing is um, uh, having the rivers be yeah. Uh, it's having uh, a second thing is having our rivers be better connected to their floodplains. So, if you look at uh, videos of the history of of a river over time, they wander around the landscape. They usually don't stay in one place. They they uh, they meander. They 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 wander, and that's pretty natural. And that whole space, even if a river isn't there now, that other space might be its floodplain. And so if a river does not, um, as the waters rise in a river, if it can't spread out into that floodplain, then it gets faster and more destructive. And uh, so there's, there have been some projects recently to um, get rivers better access to those floodplains. There was one such place in Northfield um, done, I believe, in connection with um, Friends of the Winooski, where they uh, lowered banks, gave the river better access to its floodplain, which meant that um, in last year's flood, it lowered the, the flooding in that area by six inches, uh, which may not sound like a lot, but when you're talking about, you know, six inches of uh, flooding in your living room, like, that, that is a lot. Um, so the um, one of the other strategies is to uh, ensure that floodplains remain intact, remain available to those to their rivers um, in the times of uh, high water. No. Um, is there? Is so? I mean. Floods you can't really prevent. I mean, you can. But is there? Um, I mean, further education. Uh, do you think Vermont has a has an education tool in place, or better education tools in place to ed to educate people on floods? And well, I think we need to do a better job of educating people yeah, about. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We definitely need to do a better job of. Um, educating people about floods. So you know, that includes um, understanding why flooding is happening. Uh, you know, it's funny, like a lot of Vermont's downtowns were built in floodplains. Uh, you know, they were right on the river. They were flat, it's flat land, you know, it's well, easy yeah, to build. When Vermont started in 17, 1791, when Vermont started, it was all farmland. Uh, you know, practically all the nation was farmland. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it, it, I like I understand the decisions that were probably made at the time, um, and now we are um, unfortunately uh, in harm's way because of some of those decisions. Um, what were some of the? I don't mind me asking. What were some of the? Oh well, just you know, the, I'm just referring to putting a downtown in a floodplain, that that kind of thing, um, and uh, yeah. So and uh, so there's there's that you know understanding sort of uh, the the historical connection um, to how we ended up here. I think there's um, an important piece around education around around climate change, and uh, so why it's happening now, 
And then um, I think, you know, it, we were talking about uh, dredging earlier and, and, you know, people still think that that is a good option for us. And that is really, I think, uh, indicative of the fact that um, we have uh, not necessarily educated people about the solutions um, for dealing with flooding. And then I think there's a level of education that needs to happen around how we better just on a practical level prepare people um, in terms of the buildings, how are we, how are we um, constructing smartly in a way uh, that's like, in our floodplains and how are we um, prepared for emergencies in terms of like having a bag that you can just grab um, if you need to get out quickly. For example, since you said to go back, yeah. what should, uh, what should uh, on an educated level uh, what should a person or persons put in a book bag? That's a great question. Um, I'm sure there are people who are better experts on this than I am, um, but I would recommend, uh, you know, a bottle of water, um, some uh, shelf-stable snacks, you know, things that are going to last, um, and, you know, a change of clothes, um, maybe like a, uh, like a like a raincoat um, and flashlight. flashlight, extra batteries, um, you know, whatever like easy toiletries you, you might need. Um, that those are some, um, yeah, those are some some of the first things I would think of. But uh, I'm sure that there's really good resources out there uh, with better recommendations about what should be in a go bag. Well, that's where I'd start. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the future of the more disaster? And uh, I know we talk about better, better, uh, you know, better preparation yeah. and things. But what, you know, going into the future, we're in the 21st century. Uh, uh, are there any computerized? Because I know. Um, also out west, there was, you know, dams breaking and other things happening. Um, are things basically um, more computerized now, or should, should they be more computerized when it comes to preparing for a flood? Well, I think there's definitely better alert systems, um, especially with uh, you know, digital communications, I think being able to, um, you know, push out, from the government's perspective, being able to push out alerts to people so that people are better informed about what's, um, what may be coming. Um, and then, you know, with everybody who's got their cell phones, you know, um, that's, that's a, a good way for, for folks to stay connected with what's, what's happening. Now, obviously, there are some people in the world that are the Yeah, sure. What is your office, or is your office in doing anything to help uh, get communication during a flood? A phone, computer, maybe those that don't have resources. So are there ways to get those resources so they can stay up to date on um, what's happening? That's a, an interesting question. I mean, I don't know of any resources to uh, get equipment like that, but one of the things that we did work on this last session was ensuring um, that uh, people who <clears throat> maybe communicate differently have uh, better access to emergency information. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, having picture-in-picture -picture, um, resources uh, for emergency um, broadcasts. So uh, I know there's a, a group that's working on that. Uh, my understanding was that in last year's flood, um, there was um, there was some um, uh, sign language that was being offered, but it's it's not useful if that person is not in uh, being shown in the camera uh, or shown by the camera. And Can you repeat that again and be more specific? Sure. So in last year's flooding event, my understanding was that there was some um, sign language happening while um, some emergency messages were being um, communicated, uh, but the um, the camera from you know news stations was not always you know picturing both the the person speaking um, or you know verbally and um, or out loud and the person who was communicating. 
um, uh, with sign language. And so, do you also think because uh, Vermont is a diverse melting pot, if I may say so, and we have several other groups. Yeah. Um, you know, besides religious groups, but we have other yeah people who are different also, languages. Different languages. Mm -hmm. I think it could be in different languages as well. Yeah, and so this is another one of our focuses from this last um, session was um, uh, working to ensure that uh, uh, emergency messages were being communicated in different languages as well. And so again, I know that um, is something that, that people are working on uh, to improve, and so I'll be very interested to see um, the progress that we've made to um, you know, see what further work needs to be done. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you for joining me on this edition of Able to Learn. Is there anything else you want to say regarding the flood? Or, you know, especially the flood? Um, well, uh, just, uh, it's so important for us to be checking on our neighbors and to be supporting each other uh, during this difficult time. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, is there, uh, what is the contact information for your office if people need to get in touch with you for emergency situations? Sure, um, I'd recommend my email address, Watson for VT Senate at gmail.com, uh, or you can uh, contact me uh, via Facebook or Instagram at Anne of Vermont. And uh, yeah, there, you can also check out my website, uh, Anne Watson for VT Senate.com. It's not the number four, it's F O R. Uh, Ann Watson for VT Senate. Thank you.